Good morning, everyone. It is Friday, May 7th. It's prep week, day number six. Only two more days. Uh, this Sunday, we'll be starting day one of season two of Be Formed that will last 90 days, all about book four of the Catechism. And uh, it's going to be a joy to walk with you on this journey. I encourage you in your, in your walk with Christ, with your accountability partner, your small group, and our large group gatherings. And so today we're going to be reading uh, paragraph 2564 from the Catechism. And then we're going to be meditating on Romans uh, chapter 6, verse 5. And so a short paragraph today. And this is what it says. Christian prayer is a covenant relationship between God and man in Christ. It is the action of God and of man springing forth from both the Holy Spirit and ourselves wholly directed to the Father in union with the human will of the Son of God made man. Short paragraph, but packed with meaning. So let's uh, break some of these things down. So Christian prayer, which this is what uh, this season two is all about, is a covenant relationship between God and man. So what is a covenant relationship? Uh, I was looking up online. There's a lot of different definitions of covenant, but one that I like that says this, Covenant relationship is a radical commitment to a person. I love that. Marriage is a radical, radical commitment. I will spend the rest of my life uh, with you. And, and that's what God is saying, uh, especially in, in the Eucharist. I'm standing before the tabernacle here at the, the chapel of, uh, at the Blanchett Catholic Center in Crest Hill. You know, we say at Mass, you know, this is the blood of the new and eternal covenant. In other words, Jesus poured out his very life blood for us. That is a radical commitment to a person. And who's that person? It's you and it's me. To say that God isn't some distant God out there, but God is both, um, you know, the God of the universe, but he's also so imminent that he wants to have a deep personal relationship with us, a radical commitment to us. And of course, he asks us for that same radical commitment to him. So what does that look like in our lives? Uh, it might mean making all of our decisions based on you know, God's ways. We're hearing a lot about, if you want to remain in God, keep my commandments, um, which shouldn't be just these obligations given to us, but uh, God's showing us the way to true happiness and true love. And so every time that we go to Mass and receive communion, we're renewing that covenant and saying, just as God laid down his life for me, I'm, I'm promising to lay down my life for God. It's the action of God and man, so prayer is both God reaching to us and us reaching to God, springing forth from both the Holy Spirit, so the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity that lives in us through our baptism, and ourselves, so it's both, both God and, and us, it's our heart and the heart of God, if you will, it's the Holy Spirit in us and the Holy Spirit in the Holy Trinity meeting one another, wholly directed to the Father. So all that we do is directed back to God the Father. That's what Jesus did, right? He says, not my will, but yours be done, Father. He says, I, I'm, I'm telling you everything that I've received from my Father. And so prayer in our lives should be always directed back to God the Father. Um, when you pray the Our Father, listen to those words. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Not my kingdom come or my will be done, but everything directed back to the Father. I've learned in my life that when I do God's will, like becoming a priest, it's incredible. It wasn't what I wanted to do, but through prayer I realized, and that's why prayer is so important, is that prayer isn't to change the mind of God, but prayer is to unite our will with the will of God, to come to understand God's will. And we see Jesus as he grew in wisdom and knowledge, you know, in the Garden of Gethsemane. Father, let this cup pass from me. I don't want to suffer, but your will be done. And so everything's directed back to God the Father. In union with the human will of the Son of God, made man. In other words, in, un in union with the human will of Jesus. And again, we're talking about Jesus came to fulfill the will of the Father. And yes, he's the second person of the Trinity, uh, but in his human nature, uh, he had to, he had to surrender his will 
to the will of God the Father. And that's our call as well. Our scripture passage today is from Romans 6, uh, verse 5. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. Once again, for if we have grown into union with him, with Christ, through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. So I'll pray with that. This life is about growing in union with Christ. We put our faith in him and we die a human death like him. We'll also be united with him in the resurrection. That is our hope and our faith. And that's what uh, Christian prayer is all about, uniting ourselves in and with Jesus, the Holy Spirit, who wants to lead us back to God the Father, to do the will of God the Father. Don't forget to fill out so prep week day six today. And if you want to fill out those pieces of the Lectio Divina, spend time in prayer, and those three questions at the bottom, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for all of your gifts. We thank you for this time to grow deeper in union with us in prayer. We thank you for your radical commitment to us and help us to grow in our radical commitment to you in this covenant relationship. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you tomorrow.